Hello. Okay, let's. Uh, this is just a test. Literally last minute stream. We've been waiting for the wind here in Pozo, and it's not quite come in yet. So we thought, why not? We're both here. It's Wednesday. It's the time for a podcast. So let's do a podcast. I have just got the laptop, just the webcam, and just the mic from the laptop. So let me know if it sounds okay. I'm obviously joined here by Yosef Pons, who is one of the best port tack jumpers in the world, 100%, store doubles, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, well. he's 100% one of the best port tack jumpers in the world. Um, and also coach, uh, does a lot of coaching here in Pozo, teaches forwards, teaches all the sort of basic stuff as well, but probably specializes more in jumping, wave riding and more wave stuff. So I'm also here, I can say, oh, I got a few tips as well. Obviously we do a bit of coaching. So we thought we'll just come online um, Again, we haven't really promoted this stream, so I'm not sure how many people are going to get. But for you guys at home, if you've got any questions about any jumping, any wave riding, anything at all, really, you know, around coaching and that sort of stuff, hit us up in the comments. Uh, and we're going to just do probably an hour stream or something like that, depending on if the wind stays like that. The forecast for this week was... It was meant to be a bit better than it is, but it's a bit yeah. hot. Is that right? Yeah, it's too hot and... That's why it's not getting, the wind is not getting in. It looks like in the outside it's windy, but not in in the inside, in, in the beach. So, well, it's windy. Yeah, it's, 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 it is windy. It's windy. I mean, I don't want to tell you guys how windy is at home because you'll be like, Jesus Christ, Ben, get out there. There was a guy playing around on a 4-2, <laughs> which makes us sound ridiculous, but it's, it's quite gusty at the moment. And as the temperature drops, usually the wind picks up. Um, so here we go. We're going to basically take questions from you guys at home. If we don't have any questions, I'll make up some questions and we'll just fill you guys in. So it's good to let us know you're there. If you're on Facebook, you're on YouTube, just let us know in the comments and we'll stick your, your comments up. Um, like this, Rush Wars says, why is no one doing the double push loop? <laughs> well, well, uh, Antoine, Antoine Martin, I yeah. think he did some ones, no? Interestingly, when I was growing up, I don't know how old you are, Rush Wars, but um, I always remember the Scott Fenton, like, really tried for it, double push loop here it in Pozo. Was it a push loop or double backy? Again, I think it was a double push loop. The problem is when you go for it, it's really hard to get the whip on the second rotation. And if you don't get the whip on the second rotation, you end up hitting the rig pretty hard after yeah. two times round. And if you do get the whip on the second rotation, stopping it might also be a problem and you don't know where the hell you are. So it's it's a super dangerous I think the move. most hard thing is to stop the rotation. As yeah. soon as you get accelerated on the, yeah. on the... And if you try and stop it too early, you end up on the gear. Yeah. So th this is a disaster. The Antoine Martin one, for me, you know, if you're into freestyle, it's more like the Pasco style yeah, of rotation. Yeah, second rotation yeah. But he's been around three times again. And sometimes he's done double and it's stopped nicely. Other times, not so nicely. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's a it's a very, very tricky move to go for. And weirdly, when I was back in the day, like 10 years ago, when I was doing push forwards, um, and I had a couple of pretty decent ones, but I had a couple of bad ones where I went for a push forward. I got backwinded after the first and couldn't get the forward and then it went into like a back loop. And I actually nearly landed, like landed like a back loop after the push loop. And I looked up and I'm there was a guy who was in Whitsands in Cape Town. And I was like, and then I put it over the front. And this move is fully doable, but, and I, there is a big but. When I tried to do it, because that was not, I was just saving myself. When I tried to do it, no chance. I couldn't do it. And then I did a very similar thing doing another push forward where the same thing happened, where you, you know, yeah, you go for it and you get back winded and you get pulled. So back yeah, push loop, back opinion. loop, I think is doable. I think. Push I'm not sure who is going to do it, but if I've yeah, really push, done it. Yeah, push to back loop. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Be because, yeah, I had the crash, really, really hard crash also in push forward. I, was, I wanted to go for a really high push forward and I moved the sail too much into the wind. Yeah, and, and then, then I get... Yeah, push as you start. It's definitely and I did possible. two and a half and, oh my God, the hardest crash of my life, maybe. It's painful. It's is very painful. Colin Whippy Dixon, yo, yo, windy here in Medno for light and gusty. That's pretty much what we've got. We yeah. when, when you're in Pozo, your whole world of what wind is changes. So when it's four or five and a bit gusty, 
everyone's a bit like. Mm. But it's not. It's, I think it's not because the 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 big sail. I think it's because it's gusty inside yeah. and it's as warm as the wind is coming from the south and it starts stops there. It's, it's very so, hot. Yeah. yeah, and it's uh, super hot. It's why it's why it's not sailable. Yeah. For sure, I mean, I'll say you can sail. If you're desperate, you're sailing today and you're having a good time. If you've been here for six weeks and you've been getting blown around all over the place, it's probably more productive for us to come on here and talk to you guys. So I hope you appreciate it anyway. <laughs> um, so it sounds like they're going all right in Tenerife. Uh, Peter Olsen, hey, Van Joseph, uh, what's the key to a successful Wave 360? Well, interesting. That's, that's it, a good question. It is yeah. a good question. So yeah. let me just set the scene yeah. just before Josef speaks. Um, we've just done a challenge, which I came up with because I wanted to make a video about the three different styles of Wave 360. And some people don't quite get it. And I kind of thought, well, the best way to get footage of this was to do the challenge with a few of the boys. And then I would get the footage and I could make a challenge video like two for one. So we did this challenge and it was interesting, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. It was super it was interesting. So, nice. so it depends when you ask about a 360, it depends which one you want to do. So for me, there's the, if you think of a clock face, Okay, straight up, 12 o'clock. So there's the 12 o'clock 360, where your board is vertical, straight up, into the lip, bang. Timing is everything. Then there's the 2 o'clock. So, yeah, 2 o'clock, 1 and 30. Yeah, yeah. 1, one o'clock, 2 o'clock, which is slightly downwind, which is more like the Waimaru. You see a lot of that here. That's in, the one we do here yeah. normally. It's, it's a very consistent one. You can do this one. Without a lip, really, you can actually do it on the on the on the brown bit yeah. of the wave. You can create your pressure with the rail of the board, create the press, and you can actually throw your weight down and use the sail to pull in. Again, it's much easier if I show you a video. And then there's the the 10, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, which is the more the, carbon, the yeah. carving. So you carve past 12 o'clock, more into the wave, and then the wave sort of hits you and you use the the rig as well. So there's three different ways of 360 in, and depending on the wave you've got, depending on the wind you've got in your sail, depending on a few things as to which. But I think it's really important to have a good wave. Yes. As soon as you have a good wave, it doesn't mind what time of 360 you have. Yeah. It helps you because it pulls you in. Yeah. And, and that was definitely what me and Pons found <laughs> out in this challenge. I won't give it all away. Well, it doesn't actually matter. It's me and Pons went first, and we had Mark Paré going second. And we went first. We literally spent the first seven minutes trying 360s. Seven off. Ten, maybe or more. So maybe maybe or more. I was trying to give us some. <laughs> no, but we literally tried the first 10 minutes going off the worst waves. And it was really eye-opening watching the video back going, what were we doing? Why? You know, you would yeah. never do that in a heat. You would never do it anywhere else. But we were in this challenge and just trying everything. Mark went out after watching us, waits the first one, just waits, and then goes, right, that'll do. <laughs> Bang. He yeah. is better as well. Like In three minutes, three three sixties, I yeah. think, no? <laughs> he absolutely killed it, like yeah, I said. Was... I don't want to give the video away, but it was interesting. So I would say, just going back to the original question, the key for 360 in whichever way, and I think this is this is just a life, I think, is timing. Yeah. It's all about timing, which everyone will be out there going, oh, God, yeah, we know that. Uh, how do we get the timing? But timing is you have to know which one you're going for. And it, and it does really key, which is why I'm going to make this video, which I think is really important. If you're early on the wave, like let's say your timing is too early, then you're going to do the wine route. This is you, you can do the wine route late. But you, if you're early, you don't have really any choice unless yeah, unless it's super windy. Then you could do the, the yeah, 10 o'clock, yeah. the really, you know, you carve basically all the way around. But it's still, you still want a bit of push from the wave. To do the 12 o'clock timing, you have to be on yeah. the money. You have to be on the money, putting your board as flat for me, as flat to the wave as possible to create the most hit from the wave. The more... You know, if your board's twisted like this, the wave can't get as much traction yeah, on the board. So if your board is flat, as flat as can be on the 12 o'clock, when the wave hits, you get a bit more pressure. I would say for 360s, being overpowered, not underpowered, is also helpful. Super helpful. Yeah, you, because also you can carve a bit more yeah. at 12. You've just got a little bit more round, especially, I would say, onshore, more, not onshore, but cross onshore conditions. 
is for me the easiest time to do 360s. You know, the shape of the wave helps, but the, the cross on shore and lots of power because then you can get yourself around, get yourself in, and you can get pressure in your sail. So if your timing isn't quite right, you're going to be on top of the wave, but you can still kind of force yourself in. This is key. When you get cross off, this becomes a whole new world of yeah. uh, how hard it is. And then it depends on the wave you're at. There are certain waves around the world, which obviously I've traveled a bit, but for example, Tenerife. I, I, if you ever want to learn 360s, I would say Tenerife is an amazing place to go. The Harbour Wall, I have had some of my best 360s because it's a weird wave. It's like down the line, but it's on shore cross on shore it's very yeah, it's strange square, it's, square, it's, yeah, it's, it's hard to strange. explain it but because you're going down the line but because it's cross on you can go further around the 360 which means when you pull in you've got power which doesn't happen as easy when it's cross shore yeah. so it's there are definitely easier places to... it's, 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 and, and it's quite powerful yeah it's even, powerful. even when it's low tide and it helps you a lot yeah and, and the way the wave breaks you can come back into it yeah so there's a few things that are why it's easy. Um, for example, where I live in, in Sagres, that wave is not easy. I can tell you now, it's not easy. Hukipa was, an, again, an easy wave for me. The way it bends around the reef and the, and the power it's got, and when you, like, the way Hukipa works is it's very powerful, but then the shoulder is not so powerful. So you can hit this thing, yeah. and then also in the right part of the wave, there's definitely some yeah. places which are, are nasty. No, but, um, as, but as you say, it's, it's the timing. It's yeah. so important to be in the right place and and to use the wave to yeah. to do the, the last part of the the yeah. move. The so turn, I so I think the, the the three things for me, anyways, is have power in your sail. I really feel like power in your sail will get you out of bad technique sometimes. It's a little bit extra than what you'd normally have. Um, it, obviously, timing. We're gonna we talk on that depending yeah. which ones you want to do and. For me, again, there's a lot to do with punching the sail. With the front hand goes forward and the back hand comes back. And this is the same in forward loops, which we come into. If you just do one, the, the sail doesn't move as much. Yeah. You know, if you do two, the sail moves a lot more than this. And it's the same. That, that's what I was thinking. For example, Marper is, is even, doesn't mind what kind of 360 is doing. He's moving the sail really, really oh. up and yeah. it helps a lot him to have the, the the extra pop yeah so the, the, there's a few things and it's the same for the forward yeah and exactly and i think i've talked about it on videos before the 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 360 the goose screw the winery whichever way you want to call it is for me exactly the same as the forward loop there really isn't much difference and again i'm going to break it down in this video that's going to be on the channel soon but it i've, I've done it in the goose screw video already it is very similar if you want to learn a forward if you learn the goose screw, which is a you know it's off the back of the wave 360, you can learn this in a more cross shore, you know, cross off environment. It's a less scary move because you're always under the sail, yeah. and I think this this can make people's eyes open, yeah, yeah, to have the confidence to go for a forward loop. And as we were saying, if you do one hand or both hands opposite, you get yeah. much more movement. I mean, when I used to kite. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. I, you know, when you move the bar, the bar moves much more when you do both. Is it? Don't, 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 don't tell too many people. Uh, okay, so I think it's good to test it because you, yeah. you, you need to know how it's you got to you got to know like when yeah. you're slagging off, Kai, and you've obviously got to be able to done it. Go, yeah, it's rubbish, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have a look. See if we've got any more. I mean, we're gonna have loads of it. Uh, um, I guess comments coming through. It looks like we've got a lot anyway. So to guarantee you get your comment in, I can't guarantee that. I'm just going to go down the list. Um, Hexo Flexo, gosh, name. Uh, any tips for wave beginner to get through white water and shore break? What are you calling? What's yeah, your biggest I think tip? Two, two main important things is to have speed mm -hmm. because if not, you get a stock between the waves. So power in the sail? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and as soon as you want to pass the wave to go on a tail of the board, you have the nose up. So it's the same we did with the 60s. The wave hits to your board mm -hmm. and it's easier to pass the wave. Yeah. So at any, even if it's onshore, we have to go into the wind to face the wave. And then as soon as we pass the wave to go downwind to keep the speed. Yeah. Because the same we do when you want to get planing easy, 
we go full downwind to get the speed. Yeah. So it's try to play a bit. But but it also depends. Getting through white water and shore break, it depends where we're talking. Are we talking proper shore break, getting out? Because this is a whole different story to going along and keeping speed. Because I think that's kind of a problem. Certain breaks, you know, around the world is white water, white water, white water, white water. And when you're beginning, this is really, really difficult because, like you say, you're literally slaloming out. And I always think you've got to be able to pre jump a little bit. You know, even if the white water is not big, that little pre jump. Keeping the speed. Don't yeah. ever let that speed drop off. As soon as your speed drops off, you know, so I would say definitely a, a big tip when you're beginning to, you know, wave sail is go bigger on the sail. Now, this is counterintuitive because when you're on the wave and you're doing all this stuff, you might not want no, this much it's power. It's what we do when we go to seal, for example. Yeah. And we need to pass a shore break when it's, it's yeah, yeah. Fast, so it has a lot of current and, and it's hard to sail there. You go with the biggest seals to be able to, to pass the shore breaks. Yeah. So you, so, you need yeah. power. You need power. But but again, when you're first learning, things change very quickly. So when you first go and you want power, when I first sailed at Hookeeper, I went on a 5-3. Everyone else was on 4-5s <laughs> because the days before, I'd watched everyone get absolutely nailed on the rocks. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, shit myself. So I'm like 5-3. Yeah. I was dying. I couldn't wave ride. I couldn't jump. I was so overpowered, but I was just out there. But you are safe. Yeah, yeah you getting, getting like, I knew I was not going to get stuck, and I knew I could just orientate myself with the spot without having those moments of, oh, my God, because when you get good at wave sailing, the ultimate is to go on a smaller sail because especially in crossshore and down the line when the wind's more offshore, when you're going down the wave and you're going fast, you create your own wind. So you have even more power and then you can't turn, you can't go off the yeah. top because you've got too much power in your sail. So this is a common mistake for people when they're getting intermediate wave sailing. They've always took a bigger sail, but then when they want to wave ride, you just got so much power, it's impossible. So, yeah. you know, th there's definitely different levels to, depending on where you're at in your windsurfing of how much power you should take and the direction of the wind and what you're actually trying to achieve from that session. If you're just trying to get out, obviously a bit more power is going to help. Um, and again, it, it, the, there's a difference between going out with power and then wobbling out because I'm a big fan of wobble and ride. For anyone who doesn't know, that's basically, you know, usually cross shore, cross off wind. You take a smaller sail than you probably need going out, but then on the wave, you've got the perfect yeah. power. And this is some of the best wave sailing for me ever because, That's what you're yeah, because there's, <laughs> there's, there's not as much wind. So that means the wave is super smooth, super flat, and it's just a dream to ride it. And you've got the right amount of power in your sail. So that's the kind of dream. But then when you're going out in those conditions, it's maybe, you know, head high, maybe logo high, mast high, yeah, and you've got no power. That's a whole different world of trying to get over these waves. So thinking about this, it, maybe it's important also to have, to be able to read the sets and to know when you can go out. For sure, when it's, even if, if you, well, for sure, if you have a lot of wind, it's easy to pass a wave or shore break. Yeah. But for example, in Cape Verde, where we had to pass that shore break closer to Punta Preta, you had to choose the moment to go in. Yeah. So to be quiet, to check the wave, to have the spot and to decide when you can go. Timing. Yeah, timing. Like yeah. I said, yeah. it's one of the biggest words in windsurfing, probably just in life in general, but timing. Don't be all too keen just to rush out there. If you're new to a spot, sit down, soak it in. Like I'm going to bring up Who Keeper again. I sat on that cliff. Yeah. For a few days, I won't lie. Like I was I was quite new to wave sailing at the time. I was watching Francisco Goya Policao ending up on the rocks, breaking masts. I was there with my F2 arrows like 430 mass, which I had one of for the whole trip and a 400. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't afford I remember, this. Yeah. And I would honestly watched it and watched it and listened to people and took the advice from everyone that was kind of giving it out and then kind of summed it up. And my in the end of it, I just realized I need to go big. I need to get past the rocks as quick as possible to the channel, get out there and survey it. So, you know, going back to what you're saying, it just have a look at the conditions, work out how often the waves are coming. If it's a constant barrage of waves and people are getting mashed up, maybe don't go. <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe yeah, today's not yeah, your day, you know. To watch. Don't be a it's hero. Sure, yeah. um, this happens in Tonel, my local beach in Portugal. It's not an easy place to sail. 
and people just rush out there. There's a few rocks, there's a few currents. There's so really, like I would say, maybe not advice for shore break, but speak to the local guys, work out what it is. I think also um, look at a spot at low tide. This is super important, yeah. low tide. If you look at low tide, you will know how the beach looks. You know, you get there yeah, at high you know, tide. There is a reef. Yeah, or... if you get there at high tide, you're sailing around, you're thinking, oh, this is a great wave here. This is breaking brilliant. Chances <laughs> are there's a big bloody rock <laughs> below. So, um, yeah, with that, there's, there's definitely tips to be had from just soaking it all in and taking it up. But I can... Oh, sorry. Sorry, it's bit you. Noisy, noisy, noisy dog here. Um, okay, so it, like I said, that's... That's, I said it's a yeah, long timing, answer, but it's, it's sure, a much big help, answer. A big wave, a big yeah. sail, a big, big, big equipment helps. Also a big board. Maybe to have a big board, to have a better planing and do not get stuck in the water. Agreed. That helps. A, a, a big board, like I would always tend to go, I might contradict myself here, but it, it, there's there's different no, levels of people, but a bigger board in a smaller sail is, is definitely a better way to go because bigger boards now can turn. So you haven't got that problem of not turning and you've got less power in your sail so you can actually maneuver it easier. If you've got a smaller board, you're gonna need a bigger sail to power the board yeah. and that will have its own consequences as well. So th there's different ways to look at that. And again, it depends on the level of the person, what you're trying to achieve But on a whole, I, I would kind of recommend that. Yeah. And, and sometimes for jumping as well, if you're trying to learn to forward, having a board with a bit more volume and a smaller sail, is, is much more helpful because you're planing earlier with less power. What you don't want is a small board and a bigger sail to power it because then you've got lots more power in your hands. And, and then you are able to move the sail. Yeah, the you right can't moments. do exactly what you want to yeah. do. So it, that can cause also problems. Um, okay, we got Al. Oh, that's a friend. Oh. Fuerteventura. He says, nice to listen to you both. Need the three times forward soon. <laughs> Seems like, well... Okay, so basically going the triple forward. Obviously, um, we've I've seen a few videos posted recently by Ricardo Campello about the triple loop because yeah. probably ten years ago now, maybe even more. More I'm sailing with Neil Pride JP. It's yeah, got to be at least at least ten years. Um, going for triples. Yeah. We've had Costa go for triples. Yeah. I fully believe Costa will be the one. If I think he has sailed he away, has, he, he has water started away. I think, yeah. He did a few ones. But he doesn't want to claim that because it's Philip Costa. He doesn't claim anything unless it's dry. But he's also had some really bad crashes, really bad yeah. crashes. So yeah, he needs to do in your life. And the consequences, you know, it's not like, let's say, what is it not like? You know what I think? You're not what? going to make millions by doing a triple loop, yeah. but you could kill yourself. So that's, the, that, the payoff is... I, I, every time I think about the triple, it, it's, I, I remember Bushma in, yeah. in Maui. It happens very fast. Wow. It yeah. happens very fast. And anyone who's tried a forward loop, it's gone wrong. Tried a double loop, it's gone wrong. Try to try to back loop and you get spun into the back of the boom. Things happen in windsurfing. Like in anything in life, happens very fast. And the problem is, it's not like a motorbike where you're lying on the floor, you've broke both legs, but you're still not going to drown. You know, you, you yes, you're going to be damaged, but you're not going to drown. With windsurfing, it doesn't take much to die. I know this sounds very, yeah, you know, I shouldn't be saying you're this, in the sea and yeah, you're in the sea. One problem, you hit your head, because a lot of people don't wear helmets and stuff. You hit your head, you go in under the water. If you haven't got the right people around you, for example, Klaas Voget, when Bougemar did the triple and hit his yeah. head, he probably wouldn't be with us now. And again, that's just reality. That's not me trying to stir things up, but it's 100% true. Um, so you do have to take care of that, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think it's... Few guys are able to do it, but I think Ponzi I mean, could do it. I, mean, I think I think Costa could do it. I, mean, I think there's but a, it's, uh, do you want uh, to you do risk it? too much? Yeah. I, think. I don't I don't think the payoff is big enough. I remember Ricardo had in his contract he had something like a, a, a bonus, a ten thousand yeah. bonus. He did a video. The, the yeah. video. I, think I don't was, think he got the bonus. Or maybe powers. they give him half. I think they gave him half the bonus. I could be but wrong. I remember one crash there. He, oh, went was, vertical, he went vertical. He went through the like, board. Put his knee through the board. I mean, it's. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's nasty. Possible to do it, but watch this space. I have, I have, a, I have a daughter now. So. It ain't going to be from me. I can tell you that much. <laughs> All right, let's go on. Next question. I'm just. I'm literally just going down the list. Um, we got. Uh, 
Lika Lang Recordings. Hi, guys. Francisco from Barcelona. What is the best spot in Gran Canaria and which is, in your opinion, the best spot in the world? Well, best spot in Gran Canaria. I mean, this is relative to who you are. Yeah. If you Can you talk, say the spots? Yeah. Okay. If you say, if you think about consistency and how much you can sell, for sure, Pozo is yeah. the best one. Uh, but then, for example, we've been in Vargas. When it's good in Vargas, it's so nice. Yeah. Uh, when it's wavy, there are a few spots like Mosca Point, which is amazing. Yeah. But if I had to say, but it's my preference, is you have to choose one spot. It's not common to have it, but it's Salinas de Pozo. Yeah. It's a bit more with, with the south as well. Yeah. It's amazing. It's a kind of Cabo Verdean conditions. Yeah, yeah. Also, the North Shore has a. I was going to say, spot. if you've seen any of Ponzi's videos over the winter, some of the conditions they get here in the winter look really look, it see, it looks like Hokipa. Yeah. In a few spots. But it's, we need east winds and it's not really common and it's, la it's quite light, floating, <laughs> floating with five feet. Grand Canaria. Yeah. Still yeah, windy. Like, yeah. Still windy. Um, but there's a lot of spots. I will say that this year I've had my eyes opened a little bit, maybe because I was a bit short sighted to it before. But I kind of realized with the normal trade winds you get here in the summer, it's a serious amount of spots. You know, Ojos near the airport, Vargas. If you here, start from Ojos, Moscow, you have if Ojos you've got... then you'd be more to the, before to arrive to Vargas, there is a, a in front of the cliff, there yeah. is a spot called Iterizos, which is a sea urgent because it's full of sea urgent, okay. but it's so good. Philips choose to go a lot there. Then you have Vargas. Between Vargas and, and here, there is a spot that Philip is selling a bit just for jumping. Well, but Arenago, yeah. like yeah. just for people who don't know, I don't know if you remember seeing a video this one, so from nice. a few years ago, but we had the south swell and Arenago, which is usually the flat water spot where Pozo wins and everyone else does their teaching windsurfing and Bjorn does his speed sailing. With a south swell, man, so it was yeah, just yeah. like absolute epic. I was on 3-4. I mean, it was windy, yeah. but the, the it was yeah, super so nice, fun. Yeah. And then down from there, you've got Mosca Point when there's yeah, a big Mosca enough swell, Point, yeah. which is full down the line. And these is like, literally, if you look up out, out of our window here in Pozo, Mosca's only two kilometers away or something like this. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like just upwind. Setting up here, it's, 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 yeah. it's easy to go up there. Then you've got like perfect like Pozo, which is just bread and butter, always working, always yeah. windy enough. And then you go round the bunker like down Salinas which is like there's different spots down there but it's more cross shore yeah. and again it's it's some good saving yeah, with the right spot many, many many spots yeah and so if you, if you move if you move and you check the 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 forecast is mm. you can sell in many different spots yeah interest it was actually interesting i sell more spots this year and than the I've best spot of the world well my my, my final my okay, final cool. says gran canaria is the or the Canaries in general is the best place in the world to sail because you have different islands and different yeah. spots. I would say as a wind I didn't try travel too much. Yeah. So I've sailed a lot of places. It depends when you're asking this. If it's the best spot in the world that I've sailed that I've had the most fun, for example, I think Nalu in Australia, I love the place. It just fits me. I really think it's a good spot, but it is in the middle of nowhere. It is a, a certain type of person that likes the spot. In terms of conditions, I think it's epic. Um, I've actually got a good spot in Portugal now. But, um, but I think there's another question to that, which is I, yeah. haven't, I haven't been to Taranaki. I haven't been to, you know, lots of places. There, yeah, which, there, you know, there might be some really cool really spots. And on their day, spots, it depends if you want consistency throughout the year or you want, yeah, that's the thing. What, what but if, if, if you, if you or maybe, maybe had to, 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 to have a difference between uh, the UK when it's on, I, I honestly feel like Cornwall when it's on, Ireland when it's on, Scott, whatever, like yeah, Clip sure. Muller when it's on. Like these spots are some of the best sailing I've had. But what I have 100% realized. Did you really put that brother? I never actually. I went oh, to Punta Preta, that, but it never worked. That's a dream. It's yeah. so well. The shore break is painful. Yeah. But then when you are outside there, it's it's perfect, easy. I was thinking Cape Verde this winter. Anyway, it's that's so another. Easy. That's another. It's thing. So easy. It's a yeah. It's a dream. And also Brausinho in, in the. I remember a video saying he was saying maybe it's the best spot in the world for him. Yeah. Uh, yeah but but he had to he had to consider what 
these things how how consistent it is how many times you can sail yeah. that and what type of conditions for sure if you are looking for way riding or you have you're looking for both yeah so it's it's very true i mean everyone's got their own preferences and again if it's for holiday i get so many messages because i'm obviously living in portugal now oh man i'm thinking of kind of portugal and i'm like okay Right. I'm going to answer this now because I get this question so much. It's like, I, I always say where I live anyway, it's like, if you're coming because you want to come to Portugal and you want to see the area, then by all means come. But if you are just coming for wave sailing on holiday, go to the Canaries. Because in the summer, it is just guaranteed you will get some action. Yes, it's busy. But but the Canaries is a machine. The thing just I think it's yeah. Ch keeps check churning. check the, to to understand where it's windy. For example, I think uh, from in March or something like that. From March to to June. Yeah. The Hawaii is so good. Also, yeah. it's, it's that kind yeah, of yeah. trade winds. So I think if you want a good spot, you need to know what season is working and where you are. If you're in yeah. Europe, obviously the Canaries is pretty cheap. Yeah, you know, it's, then, then Maui's on the other yeah. side. But obviously, if you're in America, you're going to go to Maui, you know. Um, but it's, it, yeah, it's an interesting question. The best spot in the world, I think, again, we just go back to the original question, is difficult. But yeah. the, some of the places I've had the most fun at, um, Portugal's on there. I think Nalu is is 100% in Australia is on there. Um, yeah, I'm going to... And, and Ireland, I've had some amazing sessions, and Cornwall. It but looks, again, yeah, it looks good there. You can't guarantee what you're going to get, so it's an interesting one. Okay, we're going to whip through a few. Um, how can you practice loop for a beginner in freestyle? Well, this morning, morning yeah. you want to go? Like, I mean, yeah. I've got. I, I'm just going to start off, then Pons can go. But yeah. there's two things which I think, which I haven't really covered in videos as much as I wanted to, but I think they're super key. Well, one thing, the main thing is the guy or the girl who wants to do the forward has to understand the way the rig moves. Because when I learned to forward loop, I really understood the, the, the trajectory of the sail. And because, and I put it down to when I was younger and I was a racer, I always used to do this thing on my longboard where I would do this dismount and throw myself over the front. And by doing this, I would create the lift in the sail and I would try and land back on the board. I mean, you don't land back on the board, but I could, I could feel the pressure underneath the sail by doing this yeah. helicopter spin, by throwing myself. So when I learned to forward loop, I learned, I did my second one, and I always tell this story, nearly planing. Like, honestly, my yeah, second one, <laughs> my friend was behind me and he was, I, I can, I did the first one just to do the full story. The first one I was like, I was like, I, I'd been like racing all winter. We'd been in New Caledonia doing the worlds. I hadn't gone to the Olympics. I was pretty pissed off. I went home. I basically went to the shop, bought some wave gear and went, right, I'm going to learn to forward loop. And I was like, I had it in my head, hand go back, pull the leg up, look backwards. I had this in my head and yeah. literally it was starboard tack, local beach, never really wave sail much. And I went, and first one landed on my back, and then and I was so excited. I was like, mate, did you, did, you see, did you see? And he's like, no. I said, watch this, watch this. Next one, I did the same thing, but I got this just perfect rotation, landed, still moving, not playing, but still moving. I looked at him and he's going, <laughs> never yeah. did, never did one as good as that for two years. Like my second one I ever did, and I genuinely put it down to this throwing you around the front. So to answer the question, you have to understand this throw. Now you can do this yeah, how is it for me in two ways. Now we were talking about this earlier because I was talking about the body drag, but let's go back from the body drag. When you're about to beach start, you can basically do this thing where you throw yourself from the water and you get this catapult feeling over the front. Now there's no real consequence to this unless you haven't got good technique, but it won't be bad. It's not like doing a bad forward. And then the step up from this is to yeah. do a body drag and then as you're body dragging, just let yourself go forward and pull into the power, yeah. throw the rig forward, and then fly around the front. Now, the reason I like this is because you have speed, you have, you get, you cannot do this movement without feeling the lift in the sail and pushing you forward. And you get this sensation of crashing without hurting yourself. And this you have to do if you haven't got the brain to go straight and do a forward. 
But I think for me, this sensation, if you can yeah, do and, this. And, it, and this one helps you to, to, to not have that fear to go yeah. forward. You realize that as soon as you, you move your body forward and, and the sail is there yeah. across the wind, it helps you to turn around yeah. and you don't crash hard. So. No, you have to twist yeah. into the power. Yeah. Because you're not connected to the board, you haven't got this thing sticking you down. A lot of people, when they try forwards for the first time, pull in, try and push yeah. themselves forward. The board stops, they're in the straps, and everything gets held and, and you don't get lift. Whereas by doing the body drag or this beach start one, you literally get this floating sort of quite a cool feeling. And for me, I'm doing forwards, it feels like a forward loop. It's, yeah. it's just a forward loop without the board, and you don't get this smash as well when I do it. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Also, there is an example that I give to to to, to the people I'm coaching. As soon as I do a catapult, and you keep the sail close with yeah. you, you spin around. Yeah. You don't crash hard. The problem is the people. As soon as we feel we go forward, we pull and we get blocked like that, and it's so hard. Or they shoot out, and yeah. the problem is, as you do this and then you shoot out, the comes everything through. comes back in front of you, yeah. and then you land into it. Whereas if you keep pulling, as long as you twist into the rotation, you're gonna land on your back. I mean, there's there there are many many many, many kinds things. of yeah. exercises. For example, I think also it's important to practice the, the kind of the the, 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 the yeah. The jive with a big board and a small set where you move the sail to the side. I yeah. feel that helps you to feel and to understand how the board turns around. So there are many, many I mean, exercises. I mean, Pons teaches that. I teach that. A lot of the top guys teach that. I mean, Ren Remco was the one that kind of put that in the limelight. I remember watching that video and thinking that is a really good way to explain it because, you know, until then, you, it's very hard to put it together. But I genuinely think this, and again, some people get me wrong here. They go, yeah, I can do the jive. And I'm like, do it then and then they do it and it's not right they, you know like people give up on it super easy you've got to be able to slam that thing around without pulling the rig if you pull in the rig when you do the jibe it will squash yeah. the board on the water and you won't get it off the wind and then the pivot points to in front of you and you can't get round it and you ain't going to do a forward like that so you have to be able to pivot that board without pulling in the rig I mean, also, Weimar is an example. Yeah. It's just size that you, you can practice and it's quite safe. Yeah. It's like this, like I say, I think the easiest way for me is is the is the cross off down the line wave. If you can ever find that, and then you do the goose screw. Because by doing this goose screw, you always end up under the sail. And it for me, it always felt really safe, like really safe. Yeah. And you can understand that forward loop. Well, it is the most important thing to, yeah. to be safe and to not hit your body with equipment and then as soon as you, you you jump to that wall, which is the fear, then you, you keep practicing. Yeah, and that that's like that's a key thing. Like, there, there's different people in this world. Some got massive balls. Some <laughs> have not. Um, I haven't got big balls. I got to be honest. So I need technique, and technique wins over massive balls any day of the week because massive balls are great, and you're going to try stuff. The problem is if you're doing stuff and you haven't got the technique, it's just a matter of time before you injure yourself. And then it's so hard to yeah. change. And, and then you... mental block. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, as soon as you get that mental block, it's probably not over, but you're fighting then to get over the mental block. And then you have to put it all back together. So you're much better to spend longer just being able to do it in your head, being able to do it on the land. Me and Pons had some quite interesting conversations this morning because we do a very similar thing. Because we, I'm going to try some doubles in the next few days. I'm going to put it out there. But, I wanted uh, to say, but <laughs> I was to you. So, so we were just talking about stuff, and when we do it on the beach, he's like, "Yeah, yeah, your, your hands moved in." And I do the same thing when I'm coaching other people. They go, "Oh yeah, I'm doing this push loop." I'm like. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, I can instantly tell just by someone visualizing it and doing it on the beach whether they're doing the right movement. So it's yeah, a so really important to visualize it. You have to be able to visualize it and almost do it before you do it on the water. If you cannot do it on the beach, you cannot do it in your head. What makes you think you can do it on the water? The, yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, no, one day before, I was analyzing how how long it takes to do a forward loop. Two seconds. In yeah. two seconds, yeah. you do the full rotation. Well, so yeah, you Less, need, probably. No, no, no. I've, I've been analyzing a forward with a, with a with a client, with a friend, and, and two seconds. So the, everything you have to do is so fast. If yeah. you don't visualize it here on the land, yeah, then when you go in the water, everything goes wrong. Yeah. 
you cannot feel it. And so you have to start feeling, okay, now I feel, I try to think on my hand. Yeah. Then you think on the board. I totally agree. I and mean, this is an interesting thing. And this is what winds me up. I mean, I've grown up with um, magazine articles, six magazine articles, 10 pages each on how to carb drive. You're like, you're confusing people, in my personal opinion, because yeah. it's like, if you're thinking that much about all these stages, it is not going to happen in any sport. You don't want to be thinking. As soon as you're thinking, everything is far too slow. If a forward loop happens in two seconds, but that's from the very beginning to like water starting yeah, away, I mean, I mean, it ain't two seconds. Like the actual motion is. Yeah, I mean, since you get a wave, you take yeah. off, you prepare everything, you, and you land it. That's the Mark Paré did three forwards in nine seconds. Oof. So. That just gives you an idea. Three fours in nine seconds. The actual forward is super quick, but you have to, you have to train your body to do certain maneuvers when one thing happens. So if I do that, my hips are automatically moving. You know, if, if, if I go put my hand back, lean back, you know, this is way too slow. So you have to know these stages, but you have to practice them in your head. So they happen together. So this chain reaction, when I do this, my hips do this. My foot does, you know, up to my chest. These yeah. happen like bang, bang, bang. Like all at the same time. They're not happening like I do this, I do this, I do this. And this is what I see with some people taking some of the forward videos, which is why I sometimes when I put a forward video on, I'm like, oh, fuck, because people are going to misinterpret it or interpret it differently to other people. So if they go, oh, Ben says, take the board off the wind. They jump up. Then they kick the board off the wind and then they pull in. And this ends up looking like a tabletop forward and can be dangerous. So it is tricky. I mean, I genuinely think, and I'm not just saying this, I don't do as many coaching clinics as I probably should do, but you guys should definitely book in with coaches. There are coaches all around the world. You've got to find a good one. Take, you know, Pons is one. I mean, as he's doing some stuff, Colin yeah, in many, Tenerife, many, 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 many Dieter, there's yeah. lots of guys that are doing good stuff. But, you know, and, and plenty more. I can't mention them all, but you really want to find one because, or if you can't, video yourself. Hundred percent, you have to video yourself. Um, and we, I, I, I keep promising to do stuff on the channel, but I get a bit overwhelmed. But I do want to be taking in videos and giving out certain advice for certain videos because I think it's quite then, a key then you thing. Can, yeah, then you realize how 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 is the movement you do? Because yeah. you feel, I remember first first attempts of forward, I was feeling it was really, really good. Or even with the doubles, we think it's good, but then you don't go enough off the win and then it's, everything goes yeah. wrong. So watch yourself with the video is so important. For sure, if you have a coach, this coach, will, it's not just to say tell you if it's good or wrong. He can tell you the way you need to yeah. practice, what you need to correct, the different exercises you can do. So. Yeah, and, and you can definitely do it amongst friends. You can do that. You, I mean, it's not that you need a coach. It's obviously useful. You can't get one, but definitely film yourself. This is really important that you see what you're doing because what you think you're doing and what you're actually doing are usually yeah. very different. And that goes with me. It goes with, with Pons. It goes with, like, we, he is one of the most I, I critical. I the big, biggest break. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's one of the most yeah. critical people yeah. on himself. And you could literally go into him full on and he won't take offense because he is a very analytical person and likes to break down his own moves, good or bad. Like yeah. if I, if I see him do something good, he's like, no, it's not good. He's it's almost a bit too harsh. He's like, no, I need to get this. No, because all, always you want to do it better. Yeah. And, and that's kind of the same for me, but a lot of people are different. Some people need a bit of stroking, a bit of encouragement. I'm but, struggling. But, from you, but I, I learned it myself alone. Yeah. So it was so hard. And, and since I had the videos, I started to understand what was going wrong. And another really important thing is, uh, what I say is, is not just go. Try yeah. to feel what you do. Yeah. As soon as you feel what you do and you start to feel if it was good or was wrong, you are able to practice the same exercise mm. or to, to change it, to learn alone. And if you've got the video, you can then look back at the video because weirdly, it's, it's scary how many of them you remember. 
You're like, oh, I remember that one. Oh, I remember that one. You might have done loads in a day, but you're like, ah, yeah. And you can go, what did I do different? Ah, my takeoff is more upwind. Or, ah, my takeoff for the forward is more downwind. Oh, that back loop, I had my hand further back. Or, oh, the wind dropped. Or, the oh, the wave the videos, was steeper. And, now, like, and nowadays with the videos in the internet, you can compare yeah. within the same screen, compare the, the different techniques. This is one thing I 100% do when we do the Sender Academy in Cape Town is I try and get the guys to do what they're doing because I'm more a troubleshooter. You know, like I find it very difficult to explain to someone from scratch because I don't know how they're going to interpret what I'm going to say. So I need them to go out and interpret it. And then I go, okay, what you think you're doing is this and we need to change this. And then you can kind of work your way through it. So at a higher level, we're talking forwards, stall forwards, back loops, whatever. I need something to work with. Just going, yeah, this is what you do for me is, is, is not really how it is. I need to see what you're doing and then we need to kind of understand what, how we can change things. And it's not that change this, change this, change this, change this. Sometimes it's changing one thing and that has a, like a, a trigger, like a domino yeah. effect to the rest. So by changing your hand or your hips, everything maybe changes. I don't need to say put the rig forward and put this back because by doing this, you're doing it. Or if you put the rig forward, maybe everything else changes. So it's, it's not so simple like coaching. Again, this is why when I make videos, I'm always a bit nervous about how people are going to interpret them. But I think what the, my plan is for the future is to make lots of videos with lots of different things and just keep them coming because one thing that will help you will not help him. And one thing, yeah, everyone you know, is something different. sometimes like a certain way you say it or a, a, a timing, you know, maybe next week it's going to help you. And those you will like learn something that everything else we've said for years, you'll go, ah, now I get it. And it's like, then you speed up because you all the stuff you understood, you didn't quite get, but then you line this one thing up and then all those things just make sense. Yeah, yeah. It's like a puzzle. You know, you until you get one bit, it's like, ah, oh, I can't even see it. And then suddenly, you know, ah, and it all goes together. Yeah. That's, that's my take on it anyway. Um, Long-winded answer. <laughs> All right, let's go. We're still we, we're not cracking through it, but we've got a few. Uh, any tips on how to get over the mental block of pulling the trigger on the front loop? Well, I think what well, that was, yeah, uh, more or less. I think we, I think we answered the. I think we the covered question. that. I think the mental block is getting comfortable with. Like you have to work out what you're scared of. This is what I think to myself. I have this problem with my girlfriend. She doesn't want to go in above head high waves. I'm like, what are you scared of? Drowning? No, 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 not bothered. So I'm like, are you scared of like hitting your head? What, what, you know, you have to work out what yeah. the fear is. What is the fear? You know, if you've got bad technique, for sure you're going to be shitting yourself because I'd be shitting myself if you said, yeah, Ben, go and do a forward, but don't cheat in at the right time and don't move your hips and look forwards. I would be shitting myself. <laughs> so technique is, is, is just, it just changes everything. I if think, you build I think, up, I think it's, to simplify the exercises to the different progressions yeah. there are many videos uh, for example i'm doing the the jibes the 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 jibes you said with the body drag yeah. can be another one but these two yeah. are really key the yeah. jibe and the body drag like or beach start thrown over the front if you do those two things and then you wait for the right conditions like this is a difficult one because sometimes i will say look you can't never get the perfect conditions but it definitely helps. The first time you try, it does help to have the right power in your sail, not to overpower it. It helps yeah, if the wave really is important. straight on, you know, and not too big. And, do, you know, these things for your first times really help because what you do on that first one, it like basically sets you up for the whole journey. And if the first yeah, attempt... In, in the first one, you, you understand and you feel everything is safe and if yeah. everything it works in the right way, then it's... you. you, you break that yeah that, that i wall. think it does make a big difference um uh, what we got we got matching i wish i could join you guys customer meeting takes priority well if he's listening afterwards well speaking of mr ezzy cut face depends on port versus starboard no i think it's what ah, we see, i see what you mean the, yes the yeah 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 but basically we were talking about the 360s before so we've been talking so long <laughs> It probably doesn't make sense now, but yeah, when we're talking about vertical versus more off the wind, most is more into the wind, depending, like he says, on whether you're on starboard or port tack. But the the, the sort of Waimaru kind of down the wind version is more obviously downwind. 
the vertical version straight upwind and then the other one is right into the wind like more past vertical um uh, does more volume help in shore break again that's exactly what we were saying before like it does help yeah. to have volume it's going to go over the white water early but also you have to remember like when you're trying to get over white water it's like surfing you've got to put a few paddles in if you're not moving quickly let's say you're wobbling and there's wave coming you, to just like you can't pump yeah. too early because you run out of steam but you can create some if you're wobbling we're talking about if you're just wobbling out You've got a wave coming. You need to create some forward momentum before you yes, get pushed back. Yeah. So you want to, that's the timing thing and comes with experience. And then you yeah. want to get your board up and take the pressure off the mass foot to get lift on the nose. But then you've got to put it in to, to gain. It's, it's, I, think it more, more, I think it helps more to keep the speed. Yeah. Maybe. And also, also if you put the board in the right position, as you said, it helps you to, to pass the shortly. But it's very really important to to have some speed and to not be stuck in between waves because as soon as everything can be okay, you have some wind, you pass the first wave, then you want you have to pass the second one or the third one, and if you lose that speed, yeah, which it will be easier. You have a small equipment. It's when you get stuck and then you don't pass. Yeah. And again, wave. it depends if, if you're wobbling or if you're planing at the time. Like you say, for here, it's, it can be wave after wave. And it's more about getting off, getting downwind, keeping your speed up, turning up, going off there, and just keeping whatever you can do to keep that speed. So helping like your little chop hops. And, you know, you've got to basically de-weight the mass foot to get the nose to yeah. come up like you would in a forward loop. So you would cheat out a little bit which de-weights the mass foot, push off your back foot and push the sail up, which lifts the nose up, but then you've got to get the power down again and get going. Yeah. So, you know, it's again, it, it, and everyone's different. It's, it's, it's not so easy doing all this talk on the internet because, again, it's... But I think, I think it helps. <laughs> I, the, sorry, the, the, the volume, it helps. Yeah, definitely. Because you, because you go more... Co it's, it's easier yeah. to, to get some speed, to get the balance. And, and again, if you're, if you're float and ride, you're trying to get and you get up, you have to remember you're probably going to get pushed back. So then getting your weight on top of the board and realizing that you're going to get pushed back, which means you're going to have less power in your sail because you're going away from the wind as well. And just making sure you're balanced on top of the rig, on top of the board, sorry. So if you're doing that, more volume, yeah. more stable platform it is going to help for sure. Um this one i'm not reading these questions before so if there's any dodgy ones um we got paul hurley say hey ben ponds having a bit of trouble landing my back loops lately seems to be seem to get a bit locked with no power in the sail on the landing i think it's because i haven't got the sail far enough forward no power on the landing that could be you're trying to close it yeah. which is maybe getting rid of a problem you've got early on. So maybe you're getting too powered up. This is just a guess. Maybe you're coming up and you've got loads of power, so you squash it and hold it in. But then when you land, you're not round enough. Yeah, so it, yeah. I mean, it's, it's so hard to know. Without a video. Yeah. But um, maybe it's the moment to, sh to, to, sh to show the, the, your back of video. Yeah, let's have a look. I've got, because I... uh, we've, been, we've been talking about forwards and, and backwards before and and... Well, this is like basically just a set of scene. This is like uh, four or five where the really tiny waves in Pozo yesterday uh, from a 360 camera. So this is like a cross onshore with quite an onshore wave. But it, this is what I find interesting is, is for me is, yeah. is this is at the top. If you look at the angle of the sail compared to the board, the sail is quite open which when I speak to people about back loops, a lot of them think they should be pulling in. And I think this is a misconception for me because this is not how it is. Whether it feels like that or not is irrelevant, but the actual visual of it is quite open because you cannot well, rotate. It's not, it have to, it's not open, but it, it's not closed. It has to be, you need to, you need to have wind in the sail. It cannot be open because- I know, but when I say, I'm talking about in yeah. comparison to the board. Yeah. For sure, yeah. In, you know, like when I say closed or open or pulled in or not, I'm talking in comparison with the board. So if we think about blasting speed, you know, yeah. closing the slot is 
you're sheeted in, yeah. the board is level yeah, with the yeah. rig. That's that for me is yeah, really be, pulled in. Needs to be Whereas if I look at this, degrees, yeah. Yeah, if I was degrees. totally closed in now, yeah. let's say with the with the board, I would not be able to rotate at the top of this platform because you've got no space to rotate. Yeah. So I think this is quite interesting. So you know, a lot of you have got GoPros. You can put them on your mast, and you can actually get this same view of yourselves and understand exactly what you're doing. Um, and for me, there is one thing which is very important. I mean, to, to back is you land it with the nose, and every back loop has different height and different speed of rotation. So you need to to understand how it works to accelerate. To, to have more rotation yeah. and how to stop it. And that's what we can see now. The sail is full to the back. It's open, but it's full to the back. His shoulders are a bit twist looking to the to, to into the wind. So it helps. It helps a lot to turn. And then it stops the rotation, moving the sail to the front. But always it depends on having the control of the high and the speed you have or the wind you have to to stop the rotation. I mean, it's difficult to compare here in Pozo, but for me, when you're teaching people to bat, you, you want to kill all the forward speed. Like, you don't want to be traveling forwards. Now, here in Pozo, when it's small and you're trying to get lift, you kind of have to use the wind, so it's a little bit more different. So when you look at some pros here, it's a bit more tricky. But when you're learning, you want the steepest way yeah. possible, and you don't want to be traveling forward. So you want to kill that forward speed. But when I say kill the forward speed, don't turn that into a super spin where you just lay on the back foot because that will turn into a push loop. You cannot let the board dictate the rotation. So for a back loop, for me, when I'm teaching is to carve into it, but then stop carving and go up. Brilliant. You have to stop the carve. Like a lot of people, when I put this micro back loop in, I feel that they've misinterpreted it and carried on the carve. And then as they take off the wave with their back foot, they're pushing yeah, through they're pushing and that creates a super spin push loop. So you have to carve in and as you take off, you jam the back foot underneath you and push the front foot out. And this drives the board up. And then we're talking about what Pons is talking about, where the sail is at the back. You can see with my shoulders in this and the sail is quite, you know, open relative to the board. And then we get to the top. So at the top, Again, it's going to happen quite quick, I guess, but I'll try and play it. You can see it's a lot, it's a small back loop, but the way the sail moves, it moves a lot further forward. Now, the best way I've found to explain this, and everyone's different, for a back loop, once you've got the takeoff right and you've got control at the top, you've got two options for changing the rotation of that back loop. Now, if you want to slow the rotation down and stall the rotation, you push the rig to the front. This stalls the rotation. Yeah. If you want to speed it up, you can lean it to the back. Now, if you think about this in terms of learning to windsurf and kind of position yourself at this position, let's, let's try and get it. So I'll see if I can make this make sense. So if you are learning to windsurf, this is you. <laughs> on a reach and you want to do a jibe from this position, you want to bear the nose off the wind, what would you do? You'd push the rig forward. forward yeah. So you, from this point, if you wanted to move that board off the wind, which essentially would slow down your rotation, you'd move the rig to the front. Now, if you wanted to speed it up or go into attack, you know, and get the board to go up into the wind, which in this instance would be to speed up the rotation, you'd lean it to the back. Yeah. So you can see like on this one, I'm pushing the rig forward and that helps because it's a quick one and I don't want it. I know I've already got the rotation from what I've done at the top. I know I'm just want to hold that nose until it goes in the water. So I'm, you can see there, I'm just, the rig is full forward, full forward. And that's when you've got a good technique, you go to the top, you put it in position, push the rig forward pretty much. And if you're a bit under, you can lift it back. Yeah, and then you, know, and then you, you, you can change it. it. If, you, if you've got height and you've got control, this is kind of an advanced technique but I feel you have to understand this. Yeah, you need to understand it. If not, you will land the backy if you have the right high and the right position. Yeah. But you are not able to correct the yeah. your, your position in, according to the to the to the board and to the sail. Yeah. That, so, that's one of the ones I used. To, I well, I like to call a magic back loop because a lot of people out there, you're probably listening, 
you land the magic back loop. Now, the magic back loop is when you have the perfect speed, you take off the wave, and the rotation you take off on just happens to be that perfect rotation that when you yeah. come round, the water is waiting for you. Waiting for you. And it just <laughs> hits, and you go, oh, oh I did it. I oh, did it. And then you're like, I can back loop. And then the problem is when the wind picks up or the next wave is different, you cannot do it. So what you have to tell yourself is you cannot back loop until until you can consistently control the rotation of different ramps. When you can do it in the wind, when you can do it in light winds, because light winds, steep waves is going to be the best chance you've got yeah. of landing a back loop. Essentially, you want to be flying towards a ramp, steep ramp. As you get there, the wind drops and you literally go. And then you've got you you everything you do with the rig will not have a consequence as much as when it's windy. And every little movement yeah, everything goes, goes really crazy. Fast. So as more aggressive is the wind, more faster everything is, is going. Yeah, but you, but you and you also I, I really believe this as well. You should give yourself like the goal to land. Like you really want to land every one, even if it's ugly, even if it's low, just get yourself into landing. Even if you drop out the foot straps and keep the rig flying. Mentally, this is useful because you learn these little tactics and again don't do the same thing every time if you do the same thing every time guess what sometimes it works sometimes it well works. it's just going to happen the same every time if you put your hand further back if you take off more into wind if you pull your back leg up harder change a few things and try and understand what you're changing and what effect it has the different things you do you need to do some extreme sometimes within reason I'm not yeah. saying oh, i'm going to go massive on this one and see what happens but and also keep it at a low level to start off with. You know, don't be trying back loops when you're way overpowered. Keep it when you've got a normal amount of power in your sail. You will definitely, because uh, what you don't want to do is over rotate back loops. So a lot of people get into their comfort zone with back loops going, ah, it's easy because they under rotate them all. And then it just takes one where they get really confident and they just ping off the lip and then they end up with the back of the yeah. head on the boom ear. It, and, or landing on the back foot, going back up for another one. This is nasty. Yeah, I, I try to say to split the, the back loop into in, in, in two, going up and then going down. Yeah. As soon as you start to go up, the, what you said before, to, to go vertical to the sky, as soon as you try to turn fast, you get over rotated and it's so easy to crash it. Yeah. So it's better to slowly get the, the movement and how to correct the position. And to be to not land it to be sure than to get over rotated and yeah under rotate is definitely better if you can work out to squash that power putting the rig forward just on the smaller ones just to start off with and build up to it same with the forwards don't just go off a massive wave and pull in yeah you might land some but better to get the technique sorted yeah. and build up because yes your mates might be doing bigger forwards and they're going hey Come on, you pussy, which usually happens. But if you're getting the right technique, you will go straight past them once you figure it out. Yeah, it's, much it's much better to take your time uh, and get the technique down. Um, uh, cheers, cheers. Yeah, good tips. Um, oh, yeah, Irish love. <laughs> cheers for the beer. Um, what have we got? I'm going to just take this off for now. Guys, how many deaths are we win something compared to most likely in this world? It's not really an issue. This is not what I, I think, was saying. No, this, this is not what I was saying. I'm yeah, saying but, because at, at what, what stage you're at, you just have to bear in mind that, yes, the water is relatively soft, but if you hit your head or something like this, you can drown. Motorbikes, obviously, if you fall off at yeah, 30 yeah, feet, cool. you're going to mess yourself up. And yeah, it's not a good idea. That's not what I was kind of saying. Um, I'm not saying take up motorbike riding or windsurfing. I'm just no, saying sure remind you of the consequences. But there's, 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 in the sea, we can crash and we don't hurt ourselves. But as soon as you lose the consensus, then it's, it's when it's, if you if you land on, with, for sure, with the motorbikes is yeah is oh, it's, it's crazy you don't think me motorbiking i'm, I'm bad well, enough, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised how we we are we push too much and oh, we and, and and we don't have many accidents uh, 
No, for sure. You, but also, you know, how, knowing how to fall off is definitely a trait. Uh, Ricardo Campello. Yeah, that, that was thing, nothing. Yeah. He's a master. They, they just don't know. Like, he knows exactly when to fall off. And this is not luck. There's like a sixth sense in there where you know where the power is. And you have to understand that. What I was saying and, is... And you know when you can let it go and when not. Yeah. Or you have to wait a bit more. Yeah. 100%. But sometimes it also goes wrong. Huh? <laughs> it can definitely go wrong. Um, Pablo saying, as you've traveled a lot, what is the best airline to travel with the windsurfing equipment? Well, over the years, it's changed a lot. But I like Turkish Airlines because not that it's mega cheap anymore. It's like 80 euros a bag. But you know, it's 80 euros a bag. You're not going to have any hassle. And it's just... Do you don't have problems with the weight? Well, yeah, but don't take above 32. Okay. You know, you, you, I mean, this, you know, what the old days were like compared to now is totally different. I mean, back then, we just shove it all in one bag. It was like 50 kilos, drag it over. Oh, that would be 30 quid. And you're like, okay. Now it's it's totally different. And long haul, depending where you're going, but I would always choose Turkish, even if it was a little bit more money, because I'm now older and I get a lot more nervous about flying. Well, every time we travel. Oh, that's horrible. Getting- I think uh, it's okay. Everything is right. But when we arrive there, you start Scared. sweating and thinking, oh, maybe it's one kilogram too much. Oh, it's nice I mean, I used to not care. I, again, I put it down to age and the, the different policies. But I just rock up and be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'll be fine. But nowadays, I do my homework. And like I said, I try and fly Turkish whenever possible. And I, But I haven't flown so much in the last few years. So I, I guess it's changing this. a bit. I cannot answer. Um, Sorry, just trying to catch up with a few here. Ezzy. Uh, for the world, I would say Maui, hands down. Yeah, I would agree. Like I said, if you if you, if you can get to Maui, Maui is yeah. obviously the mecca. It's almost like I don't mention it because it's so obvious. I don't know. Yeah. But I will say this. When I first went to Maui, I was disappointed. I really was. Really? Yeah, because as a young kid, I'd grown up thinking... I don't know. Like I'd been to Ireland and I'd been to a, a few cool places, which were for me like down the line. And this is just. And then I'd seen these videos and pictures of of Maui, and I thought, oh my god, this is crazy. And I can still remember it. I got got to Maui. It was like two thousand and one, I think it was. And um, my first, I'd heard about Specklesville. Again, it, now I know, and now other people laugh at me, but I was like Specklesville, and I'd seen these videos. I think it was like. It might have even Anders Bringdow, and it was like Specklesville, and he was down the line. It was just looked amazing. And we turned up to this beach. I was like, is this Specklesville? <laughs> and it was just like a, a, you look like the South Coast, mushy, choppy. I was like, I cannot believe. And then I was like, there's the vodka. Yeah, this is Specklesville. So I was like, and then my mate with me, Alex Tritton, he gave up windsurfing on that trip because he was so disappointed with Maui. Yeah, it depends on many. Honestly, yeah. he was like, because we built it up to a point that it was just, dream, just this yeah. dream. Like every wave was perfect. Every, you know, and he, he literally took up kite surfing, and sold his windsurfing gear after the first two weeks because he was just like, I can't believe it. Because we didn't have much kit to go sail Who Keeper, which is obviously the best spot now. But there's you have to be a certain level, and there's a lot of people. Then we went to Kanaha, Lower Kanaha. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. But back in the 2000, oh, my God, it was so busy. You have never seen so many people on this wave. So it's on a wave, and there will be like, there's like 20 Japanese guys. There was like Ooh. another day. It was just people everywhere. So my first trip to Maui, and then it's got better over the years and then I you know you're sailing more who keeper in the proper spots and then it was a whole bit different um so sorry yeah I'm just going in there but yes Maui is definitely 100 percent there um but yeah it's got it's got everything it's got flats got uh waves got everything Niels hi guys best tips technique for gaining height in your jumps besides speed talk to me well, I, I think the speed is super important, but it's, it's more it's more or less what we saw on, on the on the back loop position, or or maybe we can transfer it to to planing. When 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 you want to get planing easy and fast, you lie back and you transfer all the pressure of the sail to the board to the front. No? So for, for what what I'm trying to say here in 
in Gran Canaria, as, as soon as you jump, try to move all your body to the back, to pull your back to the tail of the board, to transfer that pressure, we press the pressure we have in the sail to the mass base and to, if you have, it up. yeah, if you have the board facing to the sky, you will get speed up. But if you mm -hmm. have it flat, like the, do you remember the, the Robin Nash nice shot, yeah. this stallion board, you get the, the speed to the front. Yeah. So an exercise I did with Carlos, with my father-in-law, it was with a hook, getting hooked. Like, when he says Carlos, let me just clear this up. Carlos Souza, which Sosa, yeah. is old coach from Bjorn Dunkerbeck, a designer, proof boards, who's obviously got a custom board brand with Pons at the moment, just so, not just some random father-in-law yeah. who's just like, got so a few he, he was, he was, he was working a lot with, uh, with Bjorn to jump high, and there is a guy who, he, who was jumping really, really high. And the position is very important. So we did an exercise, which was j jumping with one hand and with a hook. So I had, to, I need to transfer that pressure to the board. The only way to transfer the pressure of the sail to the board is lying back using the hook. Yeah. So and it, that gives you an acceleration. Pushing through yeah. the feet. It's pressure, yeah. So to, to lie back, it means to stretch the front leg and bend the back knee. Mm -hmm. So that gives you the, yeah. the, the, the yeah. pressure. Yeah, shove it yeah. forward. Yeah. That, Make, makes that, sense. That, makes a lot of sense. Um, also, you've got to remember, I think, is the board is like a sail. If you've got a, you know, I'm not saying you should have a massive board, but if you've got a bit more and you can handle it, that's the hardest yeah. thing is to handle the, the board. I know Mark Paré used to sell quite a wide board, but his jumps were fucking huge because when he basically put the rail up like this and does exactly what Ponce is saying, push up, then the lift also comes sometimes more from the board. Yeah, like, the toes. Yeah, using you put the board like that with your yeah. toes, making some pressure with the toes, and it helps a lot too. Because you get it's this really extra important. lift, like you, you, and again, you're flying the board and the sail. You know, you think you're doing this with the sail, like closing it, but actually, it's quite open, more like a. Like but if a, you see, and I was thinking, and it's because always uh, when when we talk about swimming, I'm thinking on the different forces and. and so as soon as you put the board like that, the board gets wind. Like if you mm. go with in, with a with a hand on, on a car and you put yeah. it like that, the wind pulls you up. Yeah. So the, if you put the board like that, it wants to go a bit downwind. Yeah. But as you lie back, the sail wants to go into the wind. So both forces face together yeah. and it pulls and you up. I think. And then think about the sail like a wing. You know, you see the wings; they get lift, but then they lift in by sailing flat. You know, they're not sheeted in like a windsurfing yeah. sail. And when you watch big jumps, the sail goes like a wing. Yeah. And you're using the lift upwards. So you're using the board and you're using the sail like a like a hand glider almost to, to, to glide up. So that's why you need the speed. You know, you say there besides the speed, but the speed is what drives you into the wind yeah. and you can climb with the speed. If you well, haven't also, got the speed, you can't also climb. Also, for sure, you need to be – you need to – you need some pressure in the sail. Yeah. Because if yeah, you don't yeah. have wind in the sail, you cannot go high. Yeah, so yeah. It's really important to have speed and and quite power up. Yeah. So if you want to go for the higher jam now, we need to go with some power. Yeah, because yeah. Because if not, you just get you get the 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 lift the the kick of the wave. Steep wave also helps yeah. a lot, and then you need to have some pressure yeah. to, or gas to go. Yeah. Uh, hundred. Yeah. I mean, when Costa went out the other day to do the twelve meter jump, he I looked at him and it was fifty odd knots. Like it must yeah, have I been think it was a quite big save. And he looked like he was on a massive. So I was like, "What's he doing?" And then I realised he wasn't actually doing his normal doubles and stuff. He was just trying to get a high jump. He was waiting to match to pull forward. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He was waiting until the last second. Uh, Tato Molina says, "When doing doubles, what's the best tip to keep the power?" in the second rotation. Ponzi? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've been talking about this during this morning, about how to do the, 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 it's very important what you do in the first forward. As soon as you have a good forward rotation in the first one, you get the, the, the speed and the momentum in the right position, which have to be off the wind, and then it, everything is very easy. So for me, it's, every time I had to teach a, a double forward session, what I do is to go for simple forwards, planning forwards, and to check how they do it. So it's very important to yeah, get the sail full of wind, moving the sail forward and up, being able to keep it, have it quite open to get the right position before you sheet in, yeah. before to pull. 
So, and also again, it means to have quite power in the sale. Maybe Costa can do it without much win yeah. as he did in the, in the event with the 5-3. It was amazing that double. But for me, I need some win. Yeah. If I'm a bit short, it, it's hard to to get the second rotation. Yeah. So, I mean, it's interesting because with a forward, you can get away with it going wrong a little bit because it's only one. But if you get it wrong on a double, the, the, the second rotation, the consequences are way more and more exaggerated and you're higher and you're going faster. So it really is like nearly all moves. The double is all done on the first one. Yes, you yes. can save a few with a few moves, but if you nail the first bit, like a back loop, if you nail the takeoff and the right movement on a back loop at the beginning with a push loop, everything, you've got to start off the thing right. You can always, once you're good, you can change it a little bit. But essentially, the first first rotation is where yeah, it's done on the double. That only thing you do is in the first rotation is what makes to, to have a good double or mm. to have enough speed to turn yeah. in the second one. Then I mean, there are many, many things that can can change your forward, how, when you pull, how, how you pull, the direction you take off. But yeah, yeah. that's... The first it's, forward is... It's really important, and that jibe thing comes into it. You've got to have the board off the wind before you pull in. If you don't have the board off the wind before you pull in, the second rotation will be yeah. strange, you know. So, And this is easier said than done. And also, yeah, and I remember once when I arrived here with Fragis Bowen, who was sitting yeah. here, we were thinking, talking about doubles, and yeah, it's, for the double, it's still important to go, to go down with because it's safe. Yeah. As soon as you go into the wind, then it's easy, as we said, with a simple forward to crash on the equipment. Yeah. So as soon as you are able to control that kick, to move it down in and, and and to pull there, even if you are, if you don't have enough speed, at least it's safe. Yeah. Again, same with single forwards, just to get the thing off the wind first, get yourself around, get yourself safe, get yourself under the sail, then work back from that. It's the same for me for push loops. You want to over-rotate the first couple a bit more rather than under-rotate. You under-rotate the push loops, you get scared, and then you don't want to try them. And the same, you don't want to underdo a double because you or endo it. Oof. Oof. Oh, that might happen. Watch this space. <laughs> um, Tim Hall, muscle memory. Colin Dixon's training mat did it for me. Yeah, training mat. Again, so, you know, with attacks, with anything, like you, we said it before, but, Get it sorted in your head. Get it sorted with your body movements. One thing leads to another. Starts off a chain reaction, and you, as soon as you do that, did it? It, it all yeah. did it, it, it happens. If you're trying to do that on the water, you're just wasting your time. You can recreate that movement on the beach so many times quicker without having to keep getting back up, reset, and change yeah. it. So do it everything when you yeah. consistently. Like I said, if you haven't, if you only just tuned because in, you don't have you don't have time to think. It's so fast everything. So okay, we've got DTV. Hi Ben, can you make a video on wave riding? I want to learn how to spot a good wave. I've actually made so many videos of this, but it never came out because I was doing it with this water audio thing. Anyway, long story, but yes, that is fun. When to start the bottom turn? How to hold your sail? I'm struggling with the timing of the bottom turn. That's yes, so hard, I mean. <laughs> Again, wave sailing, surfing, a lot of it is just putting the time in. Yeah. But you need a few key points to work with. That's what I would say. So the video I would make is key points to look for. Am I going to be able to just teach you like that? No, because you've got to feel the wave. You've got to understand what the goals are and what you're trying to achieve. And at key points, I think. And again, depends on offshore, onshore. You know, there's this, it's such a it's massive the hardest, topic. It's the hardest thing. Such a massive thing. topic. But I would say that the one thing you need to do is, is same in surfing, is get on waves and ride them. Let's not go too critical to start off with, but feel the power of where the wave works and try and get that flow, whether you're doing the turns you want to do. But understanding the wave is really key. Yeah, really it's key. really important to read it and to understand it because it, it, then, then, then you, I remember once in, in up here in a bit more north in Las Terrazas, but it's kind of similar conditions that it's sealed. And it was so hard to wave right away to, and, and to do it good. And then I 
get one. And it was everything was so simple, and yeah. it's because I was in the right point, and yeah. it was it's, it, you had to do too much. But as soon as you understand how a weight works, how the weight gets your speed to go down, and yeah. where you had to be on the top to help you to go down, it's it's, it's so easy. And also so, equipment, like having the right equipment. I know I'm not trying to sell you more equipment or anything like that, but having the right board that feels comfortable, that turns how you want it to turn, keeps speed. Maybe you're not so good in the waves yet. You might need a bit more width to help you carry the speed. Yeah. If you've got something narrow and you're not driving through the board, chances are it's probably going to be slowing down a lot quicker than some of the wider boards. But again, it's very – I can't just give a – like a, an overall view, but definitely equipment does make a difference. And again, saying about how powered up we were talking earlier in this, uh, in the video, you know, it does make a difference. If you're too overpowered, you won't be able to do the turns you want to do because you're going pulled yeah, down the way. So you keep, you keep uh, sailing straight, impossible to, to carve into the wave. Okay, so Stefan wants a video like that too. I will do my best to uh, produce that because we definitely get some tricky conditions in Portugal, which I think will lend itself to that. Uh, Tom Hoffman says, uh, so any changes you might come back to Oz and run a clinic here? You know what? <laughs> I was meant, I've still got a van in Western Australia and I was meant to come back this year, but uh, my missus has now got a massive belly and uh, the baby is due around Oz time. So... Uh, I don't know what anyone, uh, anyone would want to buy a van. <laughs> I don't know. At the moment, it's not looking hopeful. Although I was thinking just why we're on here, and maybe there's people tuned in that are interested. What about Cape Verde for a clinic February time? Is that a cool place to go? I've never really been, but I was looking at some of the videos from Victor and speaking to him, and I thought yeah. maybe, maybe that could be a yeah. cool place for a clinic. But anyway, but it's full of rocks. Huh? That's what I, I wasn't sure on the level you would need of, of people who there are in spots. But it's, yeah, it's not, yeah, I think you can do it. That, uh, it depends, depends on the level. Depends, I guess it the depends level on the and level. It depends on the, on also the forecast. For sure, when yeah. it's the big, it's, it's easy. I mean, Cape Town, we're still on for Cape Town, me and the Dixon. But we, I've got to have, well, I haven't got to have the baby, but a baby's got to come out and I've got to work out. <laughs> I think it's going to be a whole different world from what I've been learning. Let's see. Um, I've got Patrick. That's a good one. Thanks. Scared of. There we go. I don't know. That was probably in relation. We're so yeah, far behind on these yeah. comments. Uh, Thomas, some tips for push loops. I'm just making a video. I should really put it on here. I'm just doing it at the moment with uh, Chinesian Dangerous Dave. Um, <laughs> I didn't really give him a lot of tips, I'll be honest, but he's just a full sender. And I think for push loops, that does help. I think, you know, it's like a forward, but it's it's worse the push loop you have to be quite yeah yeah it, there's no in between it's like you either go you for go it or you don't go, you don't go. Yeah. There's, there's no like with a forward you can almost build up to it with the jibes with the things because you don't hit the equipment yeah. but with the push up if you do with a push, push loop you got to you, you got to go yeah and yeah. for me personally i would say you have got to be a comfortable sailor you have got to be up for it yeah but i think powered up like super powered yeah, up so and a more cross your wave like i've noticed with uh, yusuf here which is dangerous day he it was quite onshore so the problem is when you turn into the wave you lose a lot of the the height so then you haven't got as much time if we'd have had more cross your wind across your wave like yeah, hitting yeah, it straight you, on you he would have it. literally done it first go i'm 100 percent sure because he had the commitment and he actually had the thing but because he was having to go into it yeah, and then yeah. if you keep going, the mast hits the wave and stops the rotation. Yeah, your canal is so hard because you need to go a lot into the wind. Now, yeah. As it's quite unsure, if you, if you jump off the wind, for sure, uh, we can read. Yeah. But if, if you, you jump off You've the wind, then, then when you try to open the sail, you lose yeah. all, all the pressure. It's, so you need to go a lot into the wind. I mean, when, when you're learning cross shore, very windy. When I learned, I was on 3-4, I've told this story a lot. But let's say you wanted to do a push loop. Uh, this is how I learned anyway. I didn't have the balls. I told you I've got no balls. But I was 3-3 three, three stacked, and I was like, I've got to do this. There's other people doing it who I knew I was better than, and I'm like, I'm not having it anymore. I need to learn this move. So I was like, and I would go into the wave, and I'd throw it in, and I'd get to the point where it feels like it gets scary. There's a point in a push loop where it's not a back loop, and your board's already through, and it starts to lift and about to just go, and you go, ah! and I would let go with the backhand. So I'd go, 
and I'd stop rotating and I would fall down with the board and the sail and there's like a water triangle in between and I would fall into this gap and I'd be on the walk. Going, Jesus, right, okay, next one. And I'd let go. But this time I held on a bit longer and I, and I felt, I was like, hang on, I'm nearly there. Oh, the, the, the Long story the short, point. I did yeah. this for about an hour before I was like, don't be such a... Maybe you can use some back tape. Yeah, it would, literally. So I was like, right, this time I'm holding on. I'm not letting go. I'm just going to throw myself. So I was there, like, ah, I turned into it, and I threw. And as I got lifted, I was like, hold on, you fuzzy. And I held on a bit longer. And then I went, and I let go, but a lot later. And the whole thing span round. And I was coming down one-handed. And then I grabbed the sail again, and I landed. And I was like... And I was like, Fuck. and then I had the confidence that I wasn't going to plant into the sail. And I then I managed to get the courage because I know that one that I made, I let go because the sail came out. I just held on a few. And then that was how I got the push loop, yeah, which just... wasn't the best push loop. It was more like an interwind roll around flip. You know, when you do a really good push loop, you're pushing out early and it's a, a different ball game. But I genuinely believe when teaching the push loop, you should do the flip. Because the flip trains you to get comfortable yeah. without getting stuck on top of the rig. Yeah, it's, uh, I say to, to to think on over rotate the baggy. Yeah, to push a lot with the body. With the, with the board as well. The yeah. board is is a really underrated thing. But if you go for a push loop, you can't turn into it too quick because the mast will hit the wave and it stops your rotation. And if you're not filming yourself, you'll go. Oh, I'm not rotating. I'm not working. It's just because as you spin, the mast hits the wave and then stops you. Whereas if you just, you've got to get the momentum, let yourself go, you've got to carry it, and then you kind of whip the second bit hard. And it's surprising. You can let go with your backhand. So I, I like to say move your hands together, move your backhand further forward because it helps the sail open and over, pivot. Yeah. And once you get that pivot, it flows you around. And if it's windy, like I'm saying you should do it in wind, then you can get this flip. Yeah, and you cannot go with... with uh, no, underpowered, underpowered. Underpowered and... and if people say pull in, if you pull in and throw your head early, sometimes you just die and not die. You, you kill yeah, the you rotation. Kill the rotation because it doesn't get wind. Yeah. yeah, you don't get any power in the sail and you kind of close everything off and then you land and, on top of it. And also it's important to go a bit more into the wind than it should yeah. be because yeah, yeah. the sail gets, the glue gets wind easier and, and you turn it. For sure we can do it downwind and it's easy, but yeah, yeah you need, you need, when it's, Light is perfect for the backies. When it's power up, it's perfect for yeah. the push loops. And that's a good, that's a good one. And also, again, on the but clinics, it's so easy. Eh? The push loop is so easy the, to turn it. The push loop is the is the one of the easiest things if you've got the to go box. for it attitude. You need to go for it attitude. You cannot be like, oh, I don't know. You're not going to do it. Just don't even bother. Don't even think about it. No point. You've got to be revved up. If you're revved up and you're comfortable in wind. And you've got you know half decent conditions you will do a push loop i believe yeah, like it's so, it's so one of the turning. easiest ones to do if you've got that but you need it um okay well we're not going to go on too much longer because i'm i'm pretty sure the few of you will be it's a bit too long anyway um but um what's this seb over in oz must be oz time now looking forward to back loop practice this summer at coros i mean yeah i mean back loops are so and there's so many things you can do, just not enough hours in a day to teach everyone. But there's 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 lots of things that I see people doing. But again, everyone's individual. It's really hard to make videos with a yeah. blanket overview. It's so much easier to go right. You, <laughs> this is what yeah. Because this that, thing everyone is. needs a, a different tip, and also the equipment is different. And every set is different. So some sales pulls you on one yeah. way, and you need to. Yeah, it's, it's hard. Um, we've got recordings now. We'll go to Pozo end of August. Used to windsurfing waves in Cabaret, lots of different direction for several years. Uh, quite good. I didn't windsurf for 20 years. Any advice? Well, Pozo, when you come in August, I mean, yeah, the wind be... goes a bit lighter usually, yeah. which is not a bad thing. If you're used to sailing Cabaret, which is starboard tack, here in Pozo, it's the wind is the other way around. So for some people, that's not a problem. For other people, they're like, Oh my god! Yeah, you get, you get, you, you don't feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of everything is, is different. But yeah, I would say bring good. boots if you don't sail in boots. It, yeah, it depends if you've not sailed for a long time and it's a windy week. And, you know, you're in and out of the rocks. Again, I don't like sailing boots because I get stuck in the foot straps and it scares the life out of me. I hurt my no, foot. No, but here with the rocks, it's but comfortable. I think 
Yeah. A lot of people will say to sail in boots here in Pozo for sure. But it's easy. And then you it's can easy. sail upwind. Yeah. You know, if you're here in Pozo, if you're upwind of the bay, like there's, it's, 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 it's quite simple, especially low tide. It's, it's those high tide. I think it's, a, it's, it's an easy place to, yeah. to sail, but the people are, are a bit scared because it's when post it's on. It's when it's big, massive, and really windy. But there are a few days where it's and now and end of August is so good. Yeah, it's quite flat and, and less light, people. lighter winds, less people. So it's so good to to enjoy. And the wind normally is so constant, so it's you don't you don't have gusts, and it's it's so easy to. I mean, you, you do really need to be able to stay up wind, though. Yeah, you know, if you if you if you're a sailor that doesn't stay up wind, then. Yeah. You know, Pozo is, is a spot that's fine, but you've got to be able to yeah, stay yeah, to control, yeah, the, 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 that, I would say. The outwind position. We've got Max Speedman saying, Ben, I've got Simma Quantum, 0105. Where would you put the deck plate? For me personally, I mean, I don't obviously don't sail a 105, but on the Quantums just in general, um, I sail with the mass base really far at the back. Um you know, it's quite of a flatter rock and board, so you can sail it quite off the back, and I think it's good. In terms of trifin versus quad, I'm a quad boy. That's uh, <laughs> what, what we call ourselves. And listening to who was I speaking to the other day? It was like a big guy telling me that he liked I'm trying to think. Mine's gone blank, but uh, trying to say that he actually preferred quads as a bigger guy because he didn't need such a massive back fin and the massive back fin was kind of limited for him. But I've heard different other people saying they like yeah. that pressure. So interestingly, that I, where did I hear that? But, but in the end, every something. board is different and, and everyone has different preferences. Yeah. So it's not better driving or quad. No, it's, it's if, a personal preference for sure. For me, if you if you never used a multi-fins board, Thruster is the best option to get into it because it's more similar to a to a single fin. You can yeah. go with a big uh, red single fin and then a small um, a small thruster, so it's it's better. Yeah. But it's yeah, it depends on how, how you like to I, I'm. I prefer quads or twins. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, not. I don't really like the. I mean, it's the, an interesting one. I'd like to hear from the big guys, but like I said, I heard something. I can't. I can't wrap my brains now. But like I said, they were saying they preferred quads, and they were a bigger guy. Um, um, like I said, can't remember exactly who it is. As, um, well, it, when, when you have a quad, your fins are more closer to the rail, so the 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 action of the rail when you when you carve, it's easier. Yeah. The, the, the rail is working better. Yeah. Uh, better, easier. Yeah, different. You have more well, action like, on the rail. Yeah. I, I definitely but, prefer it. But also, as it's, it's when, when we are working with with Carlos Sosa in, in the worship and someone is coming, is the board, for sure now in the market, they put five boxes in the board to, to, to adjust a bit more to the market. But the board is made with one goal, to, to work with two fins, quad or thruster or single fin. Every, every board is different. You say that, though, but I've got to be honest. When Mark was in the team with Simmer, we had the Flywave and the Quantum, to be honest, and I preferred it as a quad, and he used it as a, a tri. And I was like, he was making it work amazing, and I also was yeah, but, having it good. So I know yeah. what you're saying, but it, it definitely... Yeah, but, but maybe... maybe well, at least I, for sure. And, and there's definitely certain it's, boards. It's, it's depends. Made. Yeah, it depends also on how how you write. Yeah. How where where you put the pressure? Yeah. How you light at the pressure? The height of the boom. I would say everything is. Uh, the advice so I would say to... is use it and and feel it because it's definitely a feel thing. I, the way you turn will just dictate what. And fin play and play with the fins and the bass yeah. because the board can be. Horrible, yeah. And then you move two millimeters, hundred percent, and it's amazing. You can smooth the you, foot straps back, or about the fins, yeah, depending fins. on the fins you have. Yeah, fins make a huge nowadays, difference. Nowadays, nowadays the equipment we have in the market is amazing. Yeah. Everything works good. It's, there is not a good and bad equipment. It's is what it fits to your sailing. I would say what is needed in windsurfing. This is just my own personal thing. Is like they have in golf. You get a new set of clubs and you get fitted. So yeah. you go, obviously, there's not enough money in to do this, but in an ideal world, you go, right, here I am. 
this is my level. We go, okay, come here. Let's try this. Let's try this. Oh, let's try this. Let's put this. Oh, what do you think? Okay, we change these pins. You do this. Okay, how's that? And they go, oh my God. Honestly, this type of fitting could be a charged for service. I really believe it because so many people I've seen not fitted right with equipment or they bought it themselves and mishmashed it together and it doesn't work I'm, tra- as I'm, trying, as it. I'm trying to do it in during the, the the session coaching the the coaching sessions i'm doing i'm trying to play a bit with the what they have not the fins because to change the fins is another thing but, but that's try- what i'm saying it takes ages though. Yeah. so it's not cost effective no. you know for you to take time to do it for me to do it for somebody it could take a lot could be days yeah. because you've got to change fins you've got to change um, things, then you've got to get the guy to try it, see if he likes it, then you might have to change the sale because maybe the way but, the sale is working. Yeah, but sometimes is... just to change it the mass base, it makes a huge yeah. difference. I mean, yeah, you're right. Well, I remember it's... I remember with Mark, Mark Perez's father, uh, we've been testing a few boards and, and he was sitting with a fanatic board and I just changed the base and the board changed a lot. Yeah, and Again, after, I totally agree. And after, uh, when when I was talking with Mark, he told me, "Yeah, with this board, I have the base in this position yeah. because it's working better." That's the so same play, with that quantum, yeah, to be honest. Playing playing with the with the with the things you have, the fins, the base, try. But but it's hard to understand how it works. I was thinking to make some videos uh, talking about in general how it. It's so works. difficult though, because I just think people are not like that. You need to grab them and just do it because I I feel like. I know like how much a fin can change a board. Mark the other day changed some bo- fins on his Fanatic, changed the board totally, yeah. asymmetric fins on the front and yeah. stuff like this, which no one out there is doing, not even some of the top guys, you know. So it is mad. And I again, I've said this story before, but I had this quant- uh, Quattro back in the day when I was sponsored by Quattro, uh, the gold one, and I didn't like it at all. And after a while, I worked out that I put all the foot straps at the back, like everything at the back, the fins, the mass track right at the back. And the board was amazing. It just it just sitting on the rocker yeah. weird. As soon as I got the back, it more back, the way where it was sitting on the rocker was just so much better. And everything for me yeah, just it, works. It, it makes sense. Yeah, it's just like it, that's why it's important to play with the, with the, with the, with the setup you have. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's not good. Maybe you don't have you don't have it in the right position. Um, it says um, Victor Lang recordings forward loops in Pozo. You can probably speak to this bloke. Sorry, I'm sure uh, Pozo wins can put you in touch. Yeah, Pozo wins or our Instagram or whatever. You can contact in my Instagram. You have your my contact. So take take the phone, send me a WhatsApp or an email, and it's, or Pozo wins having to. So would you recommend a helmet? Forward loops. Ear protection is definitely for sure. Yeah. Protection is good when you are learning something. I'm yeah. using helmet and and uh, impact vest when I want to try something. We've been talking about the other day. We've been talking about the stall forwards. The first stall double forwards I tried, I used helmet and 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 impact vest. So yeah, yeah for sure. We we should we should use it more than 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 we use it. Moving on. Should I be using a helmet tomorrow? <laughs> ben for doubles tomorrow. Apparently, yes. Or maybe now because it looks windier. It does look windier. Yeah, it's windier. It does look, does look windier. Maybe it says no, but it is. <laughs> it does look windier. Um, okay, yeah. I mean, I'm going to throw it out. I'm going to maybe try. I haven't done one for like 10 years. So I think I need to do some before the baby comes. Yeah. Just so I can't tell my kid I'm not doing doubles anymore, Dad. <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> for your, if, if you have a good forward then you can go depends on how much how, how good you want to do it he wants to do it perfect that that's why he wants to keep going because he knows he can do it i i was just looking at all the old videos going i can do it i can do push forwards and i can do doubles i'm like what am i playing at but i tell you when you get older <laughs> I'm, starting, I'm, starting, I'm starting to feel it I'm starting to feel it like everything every, uh, before it was like okay I had to go oh, I, if I see for example Philly going for push forward I, I had to go but now it's like uh, okay yeah yeah but that doesn't mind if I don't do it <laughs> No, for sure you need you need some motivation always, and I'm I'm getting it. I'm getting it. That's why I'm putting it out here now. Then my ego won't let me not try it. But I don't know if I've got my ego has definitely got smaller. So I'm like, maybe I won't care so much. They'll see. Albert saying, "Hey guys, uh, is really new wave equipment short and wider, but heavier, better for our bodies?" 
in what sense? I think it's not the, for sure. The equipment changed a lot. Mm. It's easier for riding. It's, it's I would much easier. It's much easier for 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 riding and then jumping, way riding, even planing, for, for planing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, better for the bodies. I don't know. I don't, I've noticed the difference. If it's easier, yeah. then you need less effort, so you suffer less. But in terms of consequences for the vibrations or the jumps. I don't think there's much uh, in it. Not, no. I haven't, no, I haven't noticed, that's for sure. Um, okay, we're going to ask a few more questions, then we're going to go. Uh, Rich Atlantic Wind on doubles, how do you think the body height helps in low wind? It seems that the better sailors on doubles, quite high, Victor, Philip. Mark. It's true, actually. There's not many short people mm -hmm. doing doubles. Yeah. It's true. That's my problem. I'm too short. I knew there was a problem. Ah, you see, I've got an excuse. <laughs> Cheers, Rich. No, <laughs> no. Well, I don't know. Maybe because Thomas I I gets. I, I definitely think weight makes a difference. I really feel that you get pulled out of position when you're light. I, I really see it in a lot of. Name me someone small who does perfectly consistent doubles. They're all big. Robbie, Robbie Sweet. He's not small. He's built. Like <laughs> but it's yeah, but he's not. Way, not, you mean. not not like a lightweight. Carlitos, Carlos from here. Yeah, okay, let's carry on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's more control of the sail. It's not the weight. I think it's technique. As soon as you get the technique, you you can do it. Um, apparently, you remember the jumbo club. <laughs> I've been to the jumbo club. <laughs> Yeah, that's because uh, yeah, as soon as soon as they don't pull the forward, they say there we go to Jumbo. Yeah. <laughs> so Peter Volga oh, took me took me there years ago and I didn't know what it was. He said, we got a Jumbo. Yeah. I'm like, Jumbo, what do you mean it Jumbo? You oh, you just wait. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh, this is gonna be fun. Yeah, my, my was was uh, we did the we did the training come in, in July, I think, or, or June. I don't know when he was. He had to go to the jumbo. And I know he, he's, you know that, the, you know that. This is the gay like, bars. It's yeah, the same yeah, jumbo. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm just checking. You know the people that has a really good basics, but, they, but then they don't pull too much themselves. Okay. He has a really good basics. The simple jump is amazing, but he needs some pressure. Double. Yeah, no, the, the simple forward. Okay. And, and, uh, and yeah, in the end, in the end, he did it, and he tried the the forwards again. He crashed it a few once, uh, but yeah, that's that's the show we do. If, if you don't go, if, if, if you don't jumbo. try it, we go. I, I bring you to the jumbo. Uh, Johan, hi guys. Broke my front foot this Frank joint. I know the feeling. An overpowered front loop some years ago. Long rehab, perfect foot strap size, reducing the risk. Can you what's that? Long rehab. What's the perfect foot strap size for reducing risk? I think the main thing is technique. Yeah, I, I would say yeah. this, like foot straps is 100%. You don't want the wrong size foot straps. But the technique is massive. Like my... I think I think the, the main thing is if you turn forward and you have the lateral moment of what we've been yeah. talking before, when you land, if you don't have the right... All the power is going Control, down. Yeah, it goes down, and then your body keeps going forward. Yeah. It doesn't matter how you have your foot strap, you will please yeah. your feet. Yeah, that's. I think that's the, the key, the technique. is if, Like Juan like says, if you initiate the forward loop and you're getting pulled down, the, your landing is down. And if you're too high, you're going to land like on top of your foot. Yeah. It's going to bust your front foot. It's just, it's just how it's going to happen. Whereas when you have the right technique, again, this jibing technique, you're coming out from a more sideways point of view and you're landing. So you're landing almost. Uh, yeah. And, it, it, and even if you get over rotated, what happens sometimes with me with the doubles, I don't go, I don't feel pain because I land on my back. I mm. spin around on the, the second one. Yeah. So the straps go out. But as soon as you get the, Vertical momentum, the end over, yeah. and it's when. But we can talk about those straps, and there is a problem for me. Maybe we can explain it this: is if, if the straps is too wide, the screws yeah. of the straps, the the foot is is moving too much, so uh, they make it too small. Yeah. So then it gets stuck. Yeah. So it's better to play with the screws and to make it as 
yeah it's closer to your feet and then you can get it bigger yeah and it's the stream is the the fish the freestyle sailors they have it so high yeah and so narrow so they can twist yeah. the feet in the it, in the straps it, this is exactly what it is the problem is the width if you're if your foot straps are wide and your foot is bouncing around inside you you like you say you make the strap lower and by doing that when you fall and put pressure forwards this is just holding the middle of your foot and you go Whereas yeah. if it's higher here, you fall and your foot comes out. But if if you've got it too wide and too high, then you've got no. But I think, your foot won't stay in the foot strap. But I think it's it's well, technique yeah, it's, is the is, technique for the fall is, is important. Really but there key. are many many injuries on the straps, and I think it's because of this yeah. they, they don't it's have a proper adjustment. Well, you look at freestylers. A lot of the top freestylers land some horrendous things, and you're like, but they can spin their feet around in the strap. But I know a lot of people try this and then they can't control the board and then they give up and they go, oh, no, I'm just going to make it smaller. So they end up with narrow foot straps, which are small as well, which is like the ultimate yeah. worst thing to do. I, I hate, I made the video about foot straps, but I hate telling people what to do because what I don't want is someone saying, oh, I did my foot straps. Ben Prophet told me and now I've broke my foot. It's like, yes, windsurfing is a, is a, is a sport where you can there are going to be accidents but you can only what i always say you can do you can minimize the chances by doing certain things yeah. one is the technique and the other is setting your foot straps up to the right way or the way the guys do it in the top of the world they're not then everyone does the same it's not like everyone is sailing different and, and is feeling comfortable in, in the different ways but but most of the guys have got or the girls yeah. have got well most of the guys actually they've got not always they've got bigger straps yeah because girls have got quite small feet so again unless you've got a custom but for me since i'm using custom the 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 width of the screws yeah. makes a huge difference and what what you need to know if you yeah. don't already know this in a lot of the boards boards and more boards yeah. and everything that when you put the foot straps in they come with two washers either side and that plastic washer can be spun around. Yeah. And on one side, there's a bigger gap and a smaller gap. So you can actually, if you put the bigger gap on the inside of the straps, it pushes the straps together. Yeah. Or you can have one big one, one small one, which makes it a bit bigger. Or you have two small ones, which makes it even wider. So if you're selling with boots, maybe, or you've got massive feet, you do it with the small gaps. And if you say you've got small feet, narrow, you can push it together. Or you can sometimes change the hole, sometimes yeah. depending on the angle you like, to maybe create a little bit smaller yeah okay it's picking up we've only got a couple more comments left um how do you get over the fear of stalled Ooh. forward I, I know what i did you firstly have to have your low forwards sorted you you have to have this yeah. this jibe jibe style forward sorted if you haven't got the jibe style forward sorted when you go up and your board's not off the wind, you're going to do some horrendous end over. Yeah, but it's, it's true that ones. it's quite, yeah, the first one, to, even for me, when I do really huge ones, it's it's because I like that sensation, yeah. but it's... You, it's a you scary some, feeling. Yeah. I, I can only tell, they say from personal experience, when I learned to do it, and what I did was, when I, I remember when I was first doing it, I wasn't, it wasn't windy enough, which means... It's actually bad for your back because you yeah. want you want to rotate. You need when you can do them properly. You, the the windier the better. You don't care how windy it is. You're like yes, bring it on. I'm absolutely max. You just fly into it. But when you're learning it, that's you can't do that. So you're actually doing them in less wind than you want. <laughs> so you end up. I would put a firstly. I would say yeah, put an impact vest. Impact, impact vest because you're Use gonna your land flat on your back without the right rotation. And it's just about. It's, it's the jibe. It's all about yeah, moving the board well, yeah. off the wind and letting yourself. But to get over that fear, what is it? It's it's confidence in your technique. It's confidence in the technique. Yeah, as, as soon as as soon as you go off the wind and you have the nose going down, maximum maximum you fall on your back. Yeah. So if you have an impact vest or a, or a helmet, because the heat of the water is, is yeah. safe. Video yourself because that will mean you're going to spend less time in the learning process. If you go out there for a week on your own without videoing yourself, you basically put yourself through a week of hell and you're not learning anything. You think you're learning stuff, but you might not be learning the right things. So if you literally, like Ponza said to me, if I do a double, get it on film, do one, come in, have a look at it. Watch it. Because you can learn lots from one. 
So you only have to try one, then we've got information. Someone can work with that information. You can work with the information and you can, again, go, okay, I thought my mask was on the side. It's bolt upright, right? I need to put my mask down, get my shot. You know, you can learn that very fast. Whereas if you literally go kill yourself for a week, and you, you then you see the video, you go, oh, I've been doing that thing yeah, wrong the whole week. Yeah. So, but yeah, to be to be with the right equipment, not power up, and to not go really high. I think it's important to start building it like with still look, then go a bit higher, trying to get the board looking down and downwind, and then you start. And the crash is not the hard. If you go oh. high, be, for sure, if you go mass high and then you pull it. But practice, honestly, practice the jive. Literally, when I do a jive, it feels like I do a stall forward. Yeah. It really does. When you move the board off the wind and the mass comes across, yeah. it, it's the same feeling. You just drop. It's it's weird. When you do one, you will go, oh, my God, it's just a jive. Kind of, and he needs to, but he needs to have yes. the, the simple forward had to be really good. Yes, it had to. He needs to be able to move the sail to the yeah. side. You've got to be able to do planing forwards. You, you literally, when when you do the jibe style forward, you and you master it, you will do planing forwards. Yeah. When like it kind of made me laugh a little bit because in the competition they were marking normal forwards, not landed planing, quite well, and this for me is a mistake. You, you, if, you, if you're at pro level, at World Cup level, if you don't land a small forward plane in, you've not performed it correctly or you're underpowered. Literally. Yeah. I'm disappointed. If I don't land a forward plane in, I've messed it up or there wasn't enough power on the takeoff and I haven't generated enough power. So once you can, once you've mastered the forward, you should be landing plane forwards. Not the ones that I used to do when I first learned forwards was where I just pulled yeah, in you and you land and, and you're like, I'm playing in. <laughs> <laughs> Not those ones. It happens like you're in control, you shoot yeah, out, you, know, and you yeah. literally and you have the, everything. So the landing is smooth. Oh, it's, it's smooth. smooth. You're not going to break boards. When you're learning them, you might, but when you've mastered them, um, it, it shouldn't. Um, Tom Hoffman saying about the tri-fin, quad-fin, depends on the board. Agreed. Yeah. Depends on the person and the board. Depends on a few things. Yeah, Tom Hoffman, I'm, I'm heavy and found waveboard designed for quads. Uh, use, have too much drag. Again, depends on the board because I've, I've, I've thought this a lot over the years. Is someone goes, I don't like quads. I only like tries. And I'm like, well, it depends on the board because I remember using a couple of the quads early on and they were like so draggy. But the newer boards that have been designed for quads, some of them are, are fast and free. Yeah. So it really depends on the boards and what boards you've tried. Or and I totally the, the agree. Rock line, the yeah. and, so, and some boards anything. are super draggy, but it's not because they're a quad. It's no, because, because of the rocker rock and the, the rest of it. So uh, I would agree. It depends on the board. Uh, from 30, 40 knots over there in uh, Fuerteventura. We, we, we've probably got... Yeah, it's windy. It's yeah. windy. We're going to go. Okay. Thanks very much. Right. See you later. Right. Bye -bye. Oh, there's one more. We're going to look. How many falls impact vest? I agree. Right. Pants as well. Yeah. I'm looking forward to sailing you with you in August. Yeah. He comes with a, with a training camp. It's used to come in August always. Good job, Philip. Yeah, right. At the perfect forwards. Eh? Let's go do some doubles. I think it's windy. It is windy. And it was wavy. So let's see what we can do. Hey, on. Let's have a look. See if we can see. I'll give you a view. See, before we end this podcast, I'm not sure what you can see. Nothing. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot for uh, tuning in. I mean, that was a long one. Hopefully, a few of you stayed or you've gained some Almost interesting hours, information. Um, it's not too much. If, <laughs> I'm pretty sure no one made it from start to finish, but there were some nuggets in there. Yeah. Uh, thanks for Pons. Thank you. Join in. Uh, stay tuned. I'm going to do something with Graham Ezzy, if there's anyone still uh, tuned in. We're going to do like a review of Pozo and live stuff. And so uh, stay tuned to the channel. And we're going to do the board giveaway, F2 board giveaway this week. I might even do it later on tonight. I need to, I need to really get this thing sorted and pick some but winners. But I think you need one thing. What's that? The most important thing is the double. The double, yeah. And double, what's this face? I'm pressing. I'm pressing too much. All right. See you in the next one.